We're going to be talking about various ways that we can select items on the pages and we're going to use some more advanced methods of selecting items on the pages. The page that we're going to start working from looks like this in the browser. It's a pretty basic page. It's just a series of some H tags, some paragraphs, and there's some unordered lists and ordered list items that are within them. And you can see that some of the formatting is not styled as of yet, so we'll be fixing that throughout this exercise. Let me share the HTML code with you to start off with, and then we'll look at the CSS. The page is pretty basic. It's just an HTML5 page. It contains a header with an H1. Then there's going to be an article that has an H1 and some paragraphs. And then it has an H2 and some paragraphs. And then there's going to be an aside, which contains an H2 and a paragraph. And then there's another aside with an H2 and a paragraph. And this second aside it contains an unordered list, which is going to wrap around some list items in addition to a ordered list and then that aside closes right here and then there's just some more basic content including another unordered list that also contains a ordered list item and then our article closes and then there's a footer down here. The CSS that this page contains are CSS that you should already be familiar with. The first thing that I'll point out before we get to the CSS is I am incorporating a link to the HTML5 shiv and the HTML5 shiv is just going to add support for browsers that are lower than IE9 for HTML5 elements. The first rule that I have is just going to target the HTML5 elements that we're using in this example and setting them to block. I'm using a universal selector that just zeroes out padding and margin overall. I'm setting the background color of my page to gray and then I have some various styles on the body which sets the font family, the font size, the width, the background color and it just centers this content on the page. There's some padding on our article tag. There's an aside that has a specific width, a border, some margin and I've made the font size slightly smaller within the asides and then some padding and then I just have some general rules on H1's, H2's and P tags and these are things that just f are formatting the font style, the font size, font weight. We have a border on the bottom of the H2 and things like that and then in the footer we're just making this gray and making the text white and centering the content and then I simply have a more specific selector here that is setting the H1 only inside of the header to be a dark gray to have the text align centered and then I'm setting the line height and the color to white. So when we look at the page in the browser we get something that looks like this. So what we're going to be doing in this exercise is we're going to be looking at some different ways that we can select items on the page and format them accordingly. We'll begin by talking about group selectors. Group selectors is a method that you can target multiple selectors with one specific rule. So let's make a group selector inside of our file. I'm going to add these new selectors right underneath my P tag here that I already have created on my page. We're going to start by making a rule for the unordered lists and if I begin by just making a rule for the unordered lists and I'm just going to set the margin on the left so that the unordered lists are going to be indented a little bit and I'm going to use 1.75 M's here. If we save and we look inside of the browser this is going to affect the unordered list items you can see that it's going to indent all the bulleted list items. Now because the ordered lists are a child of the unordered list, they get indented somewhat too, but ideally I would like them to be further indented. So what I need to do is I need to also add a margin on the left to our ordered list. So I'll just add a comma here and I'll say UL 
comma, OL, which in effect is targeting both of those items at the same time. This is called a group selector. If we save now and look in the browser, you can see that now we have indentation on both the unordered list and the ordered list item. So in that way, we can target multiple items with the same selector. So you're probably already familiar with group selectors, but as we ease into this class, I'm just going to review some concepts and make sure that you're familiar with terminology that we're going to be using. The next type of selector that we're going to be looking at is going to be a descendant selector. CSS gives us the ability to combine selectors together and this is known as descendant selectors. So by using descendant selectors we can more precisely target content based on the relationship between nested tags and their parental elements. Descendant selectors don't care how deep into the structure of the page they go. So they for instance would target any H tags that might be inside of an article if you used a descendant selector that was article space H1 or something like that. Let's look at how this works and actually if we look right here this is already an example of a descendant selector. Here we're targeting H1s that are child of headers and so the only H1 that's being affected by this specific rule is the H1 that's a child of the header. So you can see that here I have an H1 that's a child of the header. Here I have an H1 but because it's not a child of the header, it's a child of the article, it's not affected by this more specific rule right here. That's an example of how a descendant selector works. So what we're going to do is we're going to make another descendant selector and this is going to be for H2 tags that are children of asides. So we have quite a few H2s. You can see that inside of the main article here I have an H2 that says this is a subhead down below we have another subhead, but inside of our asides we're also using H2s right here. So H2s are being used throughout our page and if we look in the browser here we have this is an H2, this is also an H2 and remember the change as far as the font size is because inside the asides we made a rule that set the overall font size to be 85% uh, within a size. So I'm just reducing the font size here to 85%. So that's why it looks a little bit smaller. But let's go ahead and let's make our rule for our H2s that are children of a size. So descendant selectors. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set the color to be a shade of blue. We're going to use 369 and then I'm going to set my font weight to bold. Now H tags normally have a font weight of bold but up above here we set the font weight to normal so now we're overriding that rule with a more specific selector down here. And then I'm also going to set the border on the bottom to none and again this is something that I am overriding from the general H2 rule that I made. If I save my page now and we go look at this in the browser, you'll see that our H2s that are inside the asides, these are my asides right here, are going to change. So now they no longer are normal weight, they're no longer this specific color, and they no longer have the underline. They've been styled differently because of the descendant selector that we're using here. The next selector type that we're going to look at is going to be a child combinator. A child combinator describes a child relationship between two elements. It's made by using the greater than character and it's going to separate two sequences of simple selectors. So child selectors are very similar to descendant selectors which we're using up here 
in that they take advantage of the parent to child relationship when targeting various elements on the page but unlike descendant selectors they aren't going to apply to all descendants of the parent element they will only apply to elements that are direct children to the parent so what this is saying is it's saying hey go find an H2 tag that is a child of a specific item. So let's, um, before I do this, I'm just going to make a couple of uh, comments here just so that we can keep straight what these various selectors are. So this one's going to be descendant, and this one right here is going to be group. Comments are great ways for you to create notes inside of your code just so you can remember things and keep things straight. So the next kind of selector that we're going to do is going to be a child combinator. The first one that I'm going to do is I'm going to do article parents that contain H2 tags. So this rule is only going to affect H2s that are children of an article tag. And this type of selector is called a child combinator. It's worth noting in the case of any of these types of selectors where we have like a greater than symbol or a equals or a plus or something like that you can get rid of these spaces or you can include the spaces. I tend to include them just because I think it's easier to read but that's going to be up to personal preference for you to work out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the color here and the color that we're going to use here is going to be kind of a brown shade right here. So if I save my page right now and we go look in the browser Again, we have quite a few H2 tags, but only the H2s that are children of the article tags are going to be affected. Now you might be thinking, well, you have maybe a more specific selector here. It might be overriding it. Look what happens if I cut that rule right there and we save our page. And again, we refresh. You can see that my aside H2s are not taking on this brown color. They of course are going to regain the underline and the other formatting issues that we included but they do not take on the brown color and that's because this is a very special rule that's only going to affect H2s that are direct descendants of the article tag even though these H2s are still descendants of the article tag, they are not direct descendants. They're direct descendants of the aside tag, but not of the article tag. So that's a child combinator. Let's use one more child combinator. I'm going to use aside, and then I'm going to use ol, and then we'll put is the parent of li's. So again, this is going to be a child combinator. And the rule that we're going to create here is we're going to make the font style italic. And let's make the color an orange color here. So I'll use C60 for my hex value. Now if I save the page and we go refresh in the browser, you can see that I have ordered lists here on the page and here but when I refresh the page only the ordered lists that are direct descendants of my aside are going to be affected by this particular rule so again because of being more specific and of using these special types of selectors I'm able to control what's going on on my page the last selector type that we're going to talk about in this particular video are going to be adjacent selectors. Adjacent selectors are a lot like child selectors in the fact that they have a combinator that they use. The combinator is what we were just using up here, right, with the child combinator. But adjacent selectors use the plus sign as opposed to the greater than symbol. An adjacent sibling combinator selector allows us to select an element that is directly after another specific element. So what we're going to use is we're going to use H1 plus P. And 
what will have happen here is we are going to add margin on the top of 0.6 M's. We're going to add a font style of italic and we're going to set the color to a mid-tone gray. So if I save right now and we go look in the browser and I refresh, this paragraph right here is the only one that's meeting that criteria. It's basically going to find every single paragraph that immediately follows an H1 and if they reside inside of the same parent, they're going to take on that property. Since that's the only H1 we're using, let's use a group selector in conjunction with an adjacent selector. So I'm going to slam up comma in there and then I'm going to say h2's plus p tags and what this is going to do is if we go look in the browser now paragraphs that follow directly follow in h2 are going to also take on this new formatting so any paragraph tag as long as it immediately follows in h2 doesn't matter where it is on our page it's going to take on this new formatting so these types of selectors, the ones that we've just been discussing, are utilized all over the internet, but they're just more specific ways that you can target the various elements on your page without having to resort to classes or IDs. So this can be a very powerful way for you to control elements. So try to think of ways that you can use the CSS selectors to target things on your pages rather than always adding a class name or an ID name. This can be a little bit more flexible. So it might be that every time you have a paragraph that immediately follows a heading, you might want to style that paragraph a little bit differently. It can also be helpful sometimes when you have a paragraph that follows a, a list or something like that. Like right here, it might be nice for me to have a little bit more space between these two items so I might say well if a paragraph immediately follows an unordered list let's write a quick rule for that as well if we come in here and we make a rule for any sort of paragraph that immediately follows an unordered list and let's just add a margin on the top of 0.6 M's that should open this up and give a little bit more air to this particular part on my page and there you go you can see that that's happening it didn't affect any of the other paragraphs it only affected paragraphs that immediately follow unordered lists so think about ways that you can use these types of selectors to improve the design of your web page and also to help keep your web page light without having to add a bunch of unnecessary classes or IDs to the elements on your pages.